Welcome to A Word From The Wise, the Soul Wise podcast. We come to you the beginning of each month where we talk about products that we do, uh, news in the industry, and uh, just anything that we think you might be interested in. You can hear us on Spotify, Amazon Music. We can be seen on video on YouTube, uh, or just find us wherever you normally get your podcasts from. Welcome to A Word From The Wise, the Soul Wise podcast with myself, Louise Barrett, Daniel Coombs from the support team. Yeah. We are going to do essentially an FAQ this time. Uh, so I'll ask you some of the questions that you get asked yeah. and then we'll it's, go it's, through that. It's going to be a, a support themed podcast episode. Exactly. <laughs> Tales from the support desk, we'll call it. So what's the most common question you get asked, do you think? Uh... I'd say definitely the most common question is on on the theme of what 4G antenna do I need for my 4G system. And is there a common answer to that? Yeah, the most common answer I'd say is the pointing X-Pole 1. Right. It's just kind of like a, a jack of all trades antenna. Yeah, and we're slightly going through a change with that at the moment though, aren't we? Because uh, the 4G version has actually been discontinued today. Yeah. That's it. We've just it's been discontinued a while. However, the last one has gone out today and that's mm. it. We have no more left. So what's going to be your around. answer going forward then now that we don't have the 4G version? Uh, the 5G version <laughs> <laughs> which right. which we've both had for a while and is very very similar in terms of specs and performance and um, price. Yeah, yeah, even They do price. two versions though, don't they, of the 4 5G X Pole 1. Mm. So what's the difference between the 21 and the 41? The difference between them, they're, they're the same in pretty much every way in terms of how they look, the size, um, but the 21 has, it's a 2x2 two two antenna, which yeah. means it's it's sort of like two antennas built into one Yeah. with two separate cable streams coming out of it and it's going to your router because most 4G routers nowadays that most people use at least are 2x2 two two routers so they've got two antenna connections on them. Uh, the Xpol 5G 41 is a 4x4 antenna, which basically means it's four antennas built into one with four separate cable streams coming out of it. So it's only worth going for that if your router has got four antenna connectors. Though. Yeah, or if you had two routers right next to each other. Like each other well, you could there. do that, could you? Could do, if, right. if you were so inclined. Yeah. Don't know exactly what the point of that would be, but I'm sure there's some scenarios where yeah. that could be helpful. But I, th I think the reason there are so many questions about 4G antennas, some that require a more sophisticated answer than just get the x pol is that there's a lot of there's there's a lot of different confusion about what all the specs mean about them, like decibel level, um, frequencies, omni yeah, almost, so. omnidirectional, directional, the differences, yeah. and so uh, it can be quite intimidating if you're not really used to the whole. Well, that's the joy of having you on the team, Daniel, because yeah, exactly. you can answer all these questions for people. Yeah, very, very used to answering them. Yeah. All right, well, let's move on to the next one then. What are some mistakes that people make that, you know, that are common mistakes that when they ring in, you'll, say, you'll, you'll know straight away what's, what's gone wrong? Some of it just relates to people saying the wrong things for what they mean. Right. Um, so some people or a confusion of what the products do. Like yeah. going back to the 4G antennas we were just discussing, a lot of people think of them as like a mobile signal booster. Yeah. Like they put it up outside and it'll boost the actual mobile signal in the area to make it better for their phones and stuff. Yeah. Which obviously isn't what they do. They're specifically designed to go into something like a router and bring a 4G signal into that. So it's there's a bit of confusion there. Mobile signal boosters are a thing, but they're a whole separate thing entirely from the 4G antennas we do. We do get asked about mobile signal boosters though, don't we? And, yeah. and I think people are best off, I think, going to the Ofcom site because so many of them are illegal for use in this country. Um, we did dabble with the idea of selling them before mm. your time. It must yeah. have been about six or seven years ago um, and they were totally illegal back then. Ofcom have um, ratified some so you need to go to the Ofcom site and see which ones you can use in this country. 
But my recommendation on that question, which is often asked, is go to your mobile phone supplier mm. um, and ask them because they will tell you what you can use on their network and you're better off just buying it from them. Mm. They're very expensive though, aren't they? Mm. I don't think I've ever seen a decent one any less than about four or 500 quid. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a lot of money to spend on something that I've heard doesn't work too well all the time. Yeah, so. activate Wi-Fi calling and you'll find that's probably your best bet on your <laughs> mobile phone. <Yeah. laughs> so uh, moving on from there, what about things like IP address confusion? Because you see that in the films, they put an IP address up and you, and you it's think, What's usually that? an IP Is address that would never exist in real life. Exactly well. right, yeah. Um, so you get confusion with that with Well, people? sometimes we do. Obviously, for for the most part, IP addresses aren't going to come up for, for most people. But a lot of the stuff we do, um, some of the routers and the access points and kits and stuff, they're all configured via a web interface that you access via the IP address of that device. And that tends to intimidate a lot of people because it's a string of numbers with dots in between. It looks very techy and uh, they, they never, don't know what to do with it, never seen it before. Um, but normally it's really simple. For, for most of the things we do that have that, they'll have Wi-Fi as well. And if you just connect your device into the Wi-Fi of the Wi-Fi signal of that device, you then go into your web browser like Google, Chrome or Firefox, Safari, mm -hmm. and just type that IP address into the web address bar along the top and it brings you right through to the uh, web interface where you can, you can go through all the settings. config settings yeah. yeah so it's it's basically just typing in like bbc.com or something like that .co.uk so you just put in a bunch in, of decimals yeah, in, yeah. instead of letters you just type in numbers and the ip address is the number that you would use in this case yeah so it's kind of, it's kind of like a, a web address in that particular scenario yeah, so it's just it. done in a well, different style even not to get overly confusing, but even a web address really is just a, an IP address, but Indeed. in a more easy to remember way. Absolutely, yeah. What about things like power supplies? Do you find people might buy something secondhand and um, and put wrong power supplies in? Sometimes. Do you have that not, not normally with regular plug socket power supplies. People mm. normally have good grips with them. But a lot of the things we do are powered by... POE, which stands for Power Over Ethernet, yeah. which is uh, it's just a type of power solution used with some devices where, for instance, an outdoor IP camera or outdoor Wi-Fi access point is going to be obviously mounted probably too far away for any regular plug socket to reach. So the best way of getting power to them is via just an Ethernet cable, like a Cat5 cable, Cat6 cable, that you would use to connect it to a network. And PUE is basically a way where you can have it be a power supply at the bottom end, the device at the other end, Ethernet cable going between them, and that brings the power. But PUE, it's a bit more tricky in terms of how much power is meant to go to the unit, because a lot of the stuff we do, like the access points, they operate on, say, 24 volt PUE, mm. whereas most standard PUE power sources, whether that be PoE injectors or PoE switches, they tend to operate on one of the PoE standards or 802.3 AF or AT, which is like 48 volts, 51 volts, mm -hmm. so it's too much power. So you sometimes get people who've called up who've blown up their devices basically by plugging them into a PoE switch and sending way too much power up to them. So, so if you had, for instance, a Teltonica router that takes 24 volts, yeah. you need a 24 volt PoE injector to yeah. make that work, which we do do, um, yeah, we do a few of but, uh, but if someone is not sure, that it might be that they buy some, something from somewhere yeah. else, 48 volts and, and just kill it. And it's just a, a lot of people may perhaps already have a PoE switch set up, which they're using with other indoor devices, and yeah. then they've bought one of ours and they just think, oh, well, I'll just add this to the PoE switch. Yeah. It doesn't quite work like that all the time if they, if they, i mean we're, we're using the term blow it up does, does, <laughs> it's, it, does not, it really kill it 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 can do it's, it's not a physical explosion obviously and it doesn't always kill it it might just not work properly and you're not sure right. why and so then want to hope that's to, the main way yeah, so, but we have had cases where it has killed it and it's right. just dead which is obviously unfortunate and uh so best avoided yeah so if you're going to use something with poe then uh, double check what it needs yeah i guess no, yeah read the fine print yeah 
is there any strange problems you get so is there anything tell us a funny story for instance is, is there anything that um, someone's rung up and said well this doesn't work and and when you've done the research you found that yeah. there's something really weird well i didn't think it was too funny at the time <laughs> but we have had a case because another thing i do here is when people have devices that say stop working or there's a problem with them they'll send them back here yeah see if we can repair them or just end up replacing them and we had someone who uh, had an outdoor Wi-Fi access point that wasn't working and so I said send it in and it arrived yeah. and I opened up didn't open it up I opened up the, the lid where the uh, power supplies go into and there was a, uh, a spider's nest there with Ew. cobwebs and uh, were they big spiders? Not big spiders. No. Uh, and I think there was only like one or two and I think they were dead, but it wasn't, wasn't very pleasant. So I was thinking, well, Bit of a that's shock. probably why it's not working. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. maybe uh, so I think the moral of that story is check that your outdoor devices are properly sealed so you don't have spiders living inside them. Or anything that else. I have to deal with. Yeah. We had years ago, it must be 10 or 12 years ago, somebody sent um, a switch back. And there was something a bit weird about it so we actually opened up the switch so that we could have a look at the circuit board and um inside it was crawling with silverfish i think i heard about this yeah, story, yeah. and there were thousands of these silverfish things and oh it was absolutely awful i was scratching and itching for days afterwards it was really awful Oof. We've had that before, though, when somebody sent an outdoor device back and inside there was um, feathers. So I think that had possibly been a nest been, at some point. Yeah, or a bird's flown into it. <laughs> well, that, that's the point. Yeah, could be. Yeah. It does happen, doesn't it? What about um, years, again, years ago? I don't know, so I'm interested to know if this still happens, but ADSL routers used to interfere with Christmas lights. Do you still get calls like that? Not so much that because we don't really do ADSL routers anymore, well, there is but that. Cr Christmas lights are a bit of a menace for another reason. Um, so there's been a few cases of uh, a product range we don't do that much of anymore, but we still do a little bit. Uh, home plugs or power line adapters, yeah. um, which are these little plugs you plug in and they spread the wife or spread a network connection around your house via the mains wiring. And it can be a bit finicky with other stuff being plugged in nearby. And in particular, Christmas lights used to crop up as a common problem with them because the power supplies of Christmas lights tend to be very cheap and very noisy on the wiring. Yeah. And so it used to be that around around the start of December, late November every year, there would be a, a sudden influx of people calling in with problems of, oh, my, my home plug seems to have slowed down or they're not talking to each other. And it would always be, have you just put your Christmas decorations up for the year? <laughs> take them down again <laughs> or, or, or at least unplug them. that yeah, yeah. yeah. move, move them around get yeah. experimental or rather plugged in well for, that's obviously a, a winter issue what about a summer issue so yeah. we've had a really hot summer has that caused it's, any problems there has been s some real problems and some not real but we there has just been the the heat wave obviously yeah uh, which has caused a few problems of technology and we had one customer who had this access point up in the loft um, and during the heat wave this loft it, it basically turned into an oven yeah and uh, they, they were worrying that they'd cooked their access point and it, it seemed to have stopped working and they were worried about that and you know thankfully it was still working um, so it if that wasn't any damage out. yeah maybe <laughs> uh, that should hopefully was it makes you wonder how some of these devices actually work I mean if they, if they were in a loft in say in Australia or in Africa uh, you know, yeah. how how do they continue working there? Yeah, so Maybe a lot better like airflow. Strong, stronger fans, yeah. Yeah, maybe <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah. What about? Uh, well, we've had some questions come in as well, so let's see what comes up. These are not ones that you'll have seen before, but um, someone's put how how do I know if my antenna is compatible with my router? I mean, that's quite a big question, that really, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, so presuming they're talking about. 4G antennas and 4G routers, since that's most of what we do. Yeah. But can apply for Wi-Fi as well. Generally, it's always going to be compatible. Um, it's just about whether it'll fit in because it could be because most most antennas, not all antennas, but a lot of antennas come with their own cabling anyways, and obviously that cabling terminates in a connector, and then the router will also have connectors on it. 
and so, well, it's generally going to be either SMA or TS9, if it's 4G antennas at least, so if, if you check your, yeah, yeah. But if you check your router and it's got little plug-in TS9 connections and your antenna's got SMA connectors that are like big and screw on, then that's obviously not going to work straight away. But if you can get like a TS9 to SMA adapter, which we do, then you can get them working together completely fine. So, so most of the time it's not an issue of compatibility, they will work, it's just... It's about whether they fit on. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And that's what you need to see. Which leads on to the next question, which is quite an interesting one, and it says, can I use the SIM card out of my phone in my 4G router? Mm. A lot of people do like to do that. And yeah, you can, it will work. Sometimes you might have to, depending on if you've got page you go or contract or whatever, sometimes you might have to fiddle about with the router's settings to get it to recognise what SIM card you're using with it. Um, it's not really recommended to do that because with your phone SIM, you're probably going to be paying extra money on that for like calls and stuff and text charging. Um, which if you've got it in your router, it's it's not going to be using any of that, it's going to be using data for the most part. So it's just, it's just kind of a waste because you're paying for the kind of data you're not using. Some mobile providers don't like it either, do they? We had a chap a couple of years back that did that and what he did is he just changed the SIM every two or three months when the SIM provider found out um, because they they specifically wanted you to use a proper data sim yeah. in the router as opposed to using a mobile phone one yeah, but he had found um, a cheaper mobile phone one which worked in his router but once the the they'd found out what he was using it for they switched it off mm. so so you're better off really at all round aren't you getting a proper data sim for your yeah, router if you want to use the router in anger i suppose if you're using it occasionally it's probably neither here nor there yeah but if you're going to use it properly then you're better off getting a data sim, aren't you? It would be a bit annoying if you couldn't use your phone while you were using your router as well. Well, that's <laughs> it. yeah, that's if you were using the same one for sure. Uh, here's another one actually that this is that I've had a similar problem with someone who was doing a review recently and they kept calling a 4G antenna a Wi Fi antenna. So, this question says, What's the difference between a Wi Fi antenna and a mobile antenna? And what I'd said to this chap was is what you have to remember is this is bringing the 4G in and then the router is providing the Wi-Fi. Yeah. So it is kind of a Wi-Fi mobile setup, but the antenna itself really is mm. a 4G antenna. And it's an interesting question of what's the difference between a 4G and a Wi-Fi antenna, because the, the real answer to that is there is no difference other than what frequencies it does. Exactly. Um, yeah. So a 4G antenna it's just a term you use to describe an antenna that operates on the common 4G LTE mobile frequencies, which are like 960, 1710 to 2100 megahertz, yeah. 2700 megahertz. Um, but the Wi Fi frequencies, the obviously 2.4 gig, which is 2400 megahertz, and 5 gig, which is 5000 megahertz. You get some 4G antennas that do them as well, so they kind of you call them 4G antennas, but you can also call them Wi-Fi antennas because they do them all. So it's it's there's there's not a that's technology difference. for you, Daniel. Yeah. Out to confuse. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why we just call them simpler things like 4G antenna and Wi-Fi antenna, even though perhaps they could do both jobs. It's yeah. just easier to separate them. <laughs> Which goes on to someone said here uh, they've got a Rut 950 from Teltonica, and I mean this question relates really to any of the routers. Will it work without an antenna? Mm. Well, they do come with well, antennas, yeah, don't they? So you could use the ones that come really. with it. They, yeah. they do come with their little uh, indoor plastic antennas that you just screw in and uh, bend upwards. And yeah, they work fine with that. And if you lost them or just didn't want to use them, maybe if it was a particularly tight space or something, you could even use it without them as well. It will still work. It's just going to be significantly weaker in terms of performance because obviously it's not going to be the best result is to get an outdoor antenna isn't it and, always and, yeah and then link it into your teltonica router yeah and you and it, you will see an improvement yeah so you, you can use it without any antenna at all it's just not not a good idea really. yeah it won't work as well if, <laughs> if you want the best if you want the optimum result outdoor antenna yeah indoor router sorted mm -hmm. and we do housings if you want to 
got the yeah, adventure like outside as well. Waterproof enclosures for routers to go in. Yeah. yeah, and we do those from pointing and uh, Q Wireless, so there's quite a lot to choose from there. Are there any other questions that you think that people might be interested in hearing the answers to? Um, not so much questions you get a lot. Um, there is sometimes confusion with, let's say, techie terminology. So, yeah. I mean, a word I've been using a lot, which I use loads of times every day, is access point. But most people don't know what an access point is, or so they, well, they don't know the really difference sure, between yeah. an access point and a router. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, routers and everyone get, gets misused a lot, or a router, as some people That's American we call they can't yeah, speak properly. Or <laughs> they sort of pollute English people as well with the incorrect language. <laughs> um, but yeah, access points and routers. An access point is, you can, often you would call it like a Wi-Fi hotspot, that's what a lot of people do call it at least, but that's yeah. just a device that it broadcasts a Wi-Fi signal, and you can plug it into something that has a network connection to make it broadcast a, a proper network signal, um, but it doesn't do anything particularly intelligent. It's just there for you to pick up on your devices and connect to the internet. Whereas a router, although it will often function as an access point, because pretty much every router nowadays also does its own Wi-Fi, obviously, um, it does more than that because a router also controls a network, it, it uses DHCP to kind of allow things to join it on the network. Um, what does DHCP mean? Uh, to I simplify <laughs> it, it's uh, it, it's just it's just a way that any 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 device like a phone or a computer can join to the router's network and automatically work within the network. Mm -hmm. it'll, it'll be allowed in by the router. Yeah. And then the router also controls other stuff like firewalls and VPNs and other complicated stuff like that that the access point basically doesn't do any of that at all so excellent well i think we should maybe call it a day there that's probably yeah, that, that, people that's enough covered, do you think that's, <laughs> that's covered all the common things that hopefully you get a few of us calls now <laughs> well, that remains to be seen doesn't yeah. it we shall see what, what, what well to finish off then what what um what product do you you like giving tech support on it is there a product we've got that you think oh, this is really good they're straightforward and easy to answer the questions and you, you think is really a, you know is a good one to get a call on i suppose it, it might be it might be the teletonica routers nowadays that they've over the years they've gotten a lot better in terms of how they work and how their interface works yeah and so for the most part, they just set up, set up themselves nowadays. So it's easy so to direct people they're, they're on easy how to, to help solve people with, that. Yeah. yeah. Well, that makes life easier for you then, doesn't it? Yeah. What about things like the um, like the stuff we sell to the caravan people, the, the Patriots, and then with the indoor router with that? They're, they're quite common, aren't they? Do you they're get many calls common, on those? Especially around this time in like the past month or so when it's holiday time, because that's yeah. when most people are going to be using them. Yeah. Uh, I like them a bit less to get calls on because sometimes they can be a bit uh or that they, they they rely on wi-fi and i i find wi-fi to be notoriously unreliable so sometimes it's just difficult to get to grips with whether the person you're talking to is doing something wrong or if just they're operating in a hopeless scenario where the wi-fi is rubbish in their yeah. area so, so it's a difficult one isn't yeah, it yeah so i, I like i like uh teltonica routers because both they're easy to navigate around and also you can pretty much always guarantee that if something's not working you know why yeah whereas with it's if it's something to do with wi-fi you've no idea why <laughs> well thank you very much daniel i think that's been You're really welcome. interesting i hope people Good. have found it interesting hopefully uh so tune in uh, for our next one as usual you can receive our um if you're watching this on YouTube, for instance, we also are on Spotify, Amazon Music and uh, all your other favourite podcast places. If you're listening on those things, you can watch us on YouTube. And uh, that's about it really, isn't it? Yeah, I think right. so. See you all next time. Bye. Bye. Thank you for watching or thank you for listening, whichever you chose to do. Uh, if you normally listen, by all means, come and have a look at us over on YouTube if you want to scare yourselves. If not, just find us wherever you get your normal podcast from. Thank you very much. See you next month.